ladies and gentlemen, in politics, nothing happens out of mere coincidence. Everything in politics is normally well planned, well scripted, and executed to achieve a specific political objective. Nothing in politics just happens for the sake of it. For those who have been following the politics of this country very closely, a few weeks ago, Ray Ludinga visited Moses Masika Wetangula's father in Bungoma. And personally, I asked myself why Ray Ludinga would spend a lot of time with Moses Masika Wetangula's father. And I concluded that maybe they were just discussing the issue of Timo Nyonyi's gubernatorial ambitions for Nairobi. Today, Moses Masika Wetangula's brother, Fred Wetangula, officially ditched for Kenya and joined ODM party. What was the objective of that particular defection? That's exactly what I want us to analyze in this video. Because there is no way Moses Masika Wetangula's brother can officially just defect like that unless there is something. For those who follow the politics, Today, Ray Ludinga was in Bungoma. Of course, he began his uh, nine-day consultative meeting in uh, Busia. Yesterday, he was in... Um, yesterday, Ray Ludinga was in um, Vihiga. Today, Bungoma. And the main event was the defection of Moses Masika Wetangula's brother, Fred. I want you guys to watch Ray Ludinga receiving Fred Wetangula to ODM party. And then I want us to do a critical analysis about that particular defection. Sasa baba, kuna watu tutatambulisha baada ya hii, lakini nataka kukuomba kwa heshima yako. Kuna wazito ambao tunataka upoke rasmi kwa chama cha ODM. Ndao ndio mutaelewa kwa nini watu wako na asira huku inje. Kwa sababu chama ya huko inaziti kuporomoka, watu wanaingia kwa ODM. Baba, tafadhali na kuomba uje usimame hapa. Mweshimua Fred Wetangula. Njo hapa baba kupoke rasmi mbele ya wananchi wa Bungoma akuvalishe nembo za chama cha ODM Wananchi oye Bungoma wote mko poa Nina furaha siku ya leo Nimesimama hapa na ndugu yangu mpendwa team Nimekuja kusindikiza team aende akue governor wa Nairobi. Timu hataki kiti Bungoma. Timu hataki kiti ya Weta. Weta asimami kiti yoyote Bungoma. Sawa sawa. Sasa sisi tukiwa hapa Bungoma tunajulikana wati ya mlembe. Si wati ya kurusha mawe, si wati ya kutusi wageni. Mmejua huyu mzee ametunza watu wengi. Mnakumbuka amesimama hii Bungoma so many times akikampeinia Moses Masika Wetangula in 2013 kama uhuru na Ruto wamemtoa kuwa nani senator. Si mnakumbuka? Sana Raila ina alikuwa kumsumbi. Karibu Bungoma. Sisi tumelinda siasa ya Bungoma. Baba tumekuwa na yeye akatushikilia tangu 2013 tulikuwa na yeye code. Nakumbuka baba wakati wametoa ndugu yangu kwa ballot baba stayed here campaigned with the weta so baba has been a friend with the wetangulas si team peke yake mahali speaker ako mahali alikuwa na utelevu baba alikuwa na e. sasa mimi na washukuru nyinyi wote kwa kusimama na baba baba amesimama na sisi mimi nimeonelea leo Moses ni ndugu yetu mkubwa is our patriarch. Mahali tumemfikisha he doesn't need support again, si ndio? So the question is why would Wetangula's brother decide to defect from Fort Kenya? Because if anything, Tim Wanyonyi has always been in ODM for a long time. Fred has always been with Wetangula from the time Wetangula was in Ford Kenya. So why would he then now decide to dump Wetangula when Wetangula is the third in command in quote in the Republic of Kenya? It means there is something. Again, let us figure it out. Why would Fred Wetangula defect at this particular point in time?
First of all, let us go and look at the history of Moses Masika Wetangula and why the defection is important for Raila Odinga and for Kenyan politics. Wetangula was a co-principal in a court that was 2013 up to 2017. Then he was also a co-principal in NASA, that is 2017, until the time he decided to leave Raila Odinga. And of course, Moses Masika Wetangula defection from uh, NASA or Azimio, for, for that matter, really affected Raila Amolo Odinga. In fact, if you ask anybody who understands the politics of the Republic of Kenya, they will tell you that it is Moses Masika Wetangula who actually delivered the presidency to William Ruto. Because if you look at the presidential votes, Wetangula delivered 255 thousand votes to Ruto. Previously, those votes would have gone to Raila Odinga and definitely, definitely would have tilted the equation in favor of Raila Odinga. And we are talking only of Bungoma. Of course, he has a bit of influence in places like Transoia, in places like, uh, say, Nairobi a bit. But what was the objective of that particular defection? Before we get into all those details, in case you're watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support because without the support, this channel cannot be where it is. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, allow me to dive in. But before I dive in, allow me to also take this opportunity to thank the following people. You are seeing their names on the screen there for the coffee which they sent to me earlier. It goes a long way in supporting the channel you can also do the same using the numbers you are seeing on your screen ladies and gentlemen what was the objective of that defection and by the way red odinga was in bungoma the reception was so good but there was a problem there was determination by ford kenya and the police to stop red odinga from addressing the main rally that was supposed to take place at poster ground and in fact it took the intervention of the men in black from Bungoma to chase away Ford Kenya supporters who had been paid to disrupt the rally. I want you to watch and listen to what this guy is saying because he was on the ground. All right, guys, there's chaos right now in Bungoma town. Uh, this is uh, Sharif Center. As you can see, uh, I'm just on the rally. Uh, Raila Odinga is uh, at the rally and uh, several other leaders. Now, the biggest issue is. Uh, the biggest issue is uh Wakwabi. Yo, this is Douglas Malala. Nakama <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, ODM, ODM supporters are coming back. They are celebrating after Kusukuza Kusukuza out here for Kenya. So guys, uh, as you can see, okay, at the back there, I can see a group regrouping. There's some, uh, there's a regrouping going on. Uh -huh. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a camera. And of course, even during the time I was active in uh, politics, 
the the rivalry between Fort Kenya <laughs> and ODM in Bongoma is normally at another level. In fact, I remember in 2017, that's that's probably where Raila Odinga lost Bongoma. Fort Kenya convinced Raila Odinga not to sponsor candidates in Bongoma. Fort Kenya then ended up winning most of those seats. ODM supporters from Bongoma that time were very angry including uh, the former assistant minister in the office of the prime minister who was this guy Hangat Kangata was it called Hangat someone someone like that but what do you think was the objective of today's defection of Moses Masikaweta Gulas brother number 1 i am convinced beyond any reasonable doubt that Rila Muludinga has a lot of interest in Bungoma county and Bukusu votes in particular. I think Raila Odinga has realized the mistake he committed in the last election. And that's why he's moving. And the way Raila Odinga is moving is very strategic, but really gaining ground. In the last election, in Bungoma, Ruto got 255,000 votes. Raila Odinga got 145,000 votes. That's around 35%. Of the votes. Good but not very good. But Raila Odinga is convinced that with a bit of effort he can improve on that vote. And that's why during today's defection you saw the Wetangula brother defecting, you saw other Ford Kenya guys defecting and most of these guys are actually very strong aspirants from the ground. So Raila probably is interested in those votes and i can conclude that that interest is actually motivated by either the desire of Raila Odinga of, of running again because remember Moses Masika Watangula will not be on the ballot right so i don't think he will have a lot of say then in, on the ballot there because already he's a speaker and it's understandable that a speaker will always be elected so Raila Odinga might be looking at how he can chew the votes from Bungoma. Number two, I also see it as Relu Dinga's revenge mission. <laughs> Just like I explained earlier there, that if Wetangula had not joined William Ruto, probably William Ruto would not be the president of the Republic of Kenya. For several reasons, <clears throat> Wetangula brought to Ruto's camp what is called perceptional value. Number two, it was now possible for rigging to even take place in Bongoma. In fact, if you looked at uh, the areas as you had issues with the, during the, the last election, was Bongoma. So it was possible because it was easy for Ruto to claim that he won Bongoma because of Wetangula. So that's how he was able to, to win. Rallo Dinga believes he lost because of Bongoma. So he's revenging on Wetangula. And he began by going to the father, now to the brother, and he's convinced the brother to run in, uh, in uh, Kabuchai. Then, team gubernatorial candidate in Nairobi. In the last election, Raila Odinga never supported a team in Nairobi. And of course, that can be attributed to why he did not really receive that support from Bongoma, because people like Wetangula took advantage of that. So he's now saying, okay, Team Wanyonyi go to Nairobi. Wewe Kabushai. Who else? Let us now campaign. Then it, there's no way you can accuse Raila of fighting Wetangola if he's with two brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, I think it's also about the Nairobi gubernatorial seat. How do you win Nairobi gubernatorial seat? Simple. It's normally tribal arithmetics. Let me explain to you how Kedero won in 2013. Kedero won through Azimio. The Lua votes, the Luya votes, although he had issues with the Mumias, the Kamba votes were for him. And of course, during that time, Kod in general. Sonko, how do you Sonko win? Sonko won this way. He had the support of the Kikui votes. Then the Kambas who are part of NASA, 
did not support Kidero. They voted for Sonko. And of course, Sonko has some of his support base, which is the poor people. So tribal. How did Sakaja win? Again, simple. The Kikuyu vote and the Luya votes. And of course, let me put it, ODM votes. Because there were majority of ODM supporters who didn't approve the candidature of Poli Kapigande. So they really did not vote for Igabe. They ended up voting for Sakaja. So in 2027, it's still going to be the same. For Tim Wanyonyi to win, first of all, he must have the backing of the ODM party. He must be presented as the ODM gubernatorial candidate. That will seal the Lua votes and of course the Luya votes. So why is Rero Dinga interested in going to Bukoma? The Bukusu votes because he wants to consolidate all of them so that when that time comes, they will be fully in, uh, <laughs> in that basket. Because remember, even the senatorial candidate is a Bukusu guy. So I think he has that interest. Number four, Rero Dinga is also consolidating his strongholds. If you've been observing his latest moves, just consolidating the basis. As much as Bungoma is not his strong base in quotes, but there's a po possibility that it can be turned because the fact of the fact that they voted for him 2013, 2017. And lastly, Relu Ding is also taking advantage of Kenya Kwanza dwindling popularity. Today in the Republic of Kenya, the popularity of Kenya Kwanza is at its lowest. So Relu Ding is simply taking advantage of that. I don't know what you think. That's my take. If you watch this video up to this stage, kindly let me know in the comment section. And if you've also watched this video up to this stage but not yet subscribed, please do that right away. Thank you and may you have a good day. Bye-bye.